When running some long-running commands in the shell, you may prefer to have them run in the background, so that you can continue using the shell for other tasks. One way to accomplish this would be to simply open a second shell window, but that does involve using a bit more memory and processor time on your computer and gives you another window to have to manage. Another option is to have the commands run as a background job. Background jobs simply move the command processing into the background. The command continues to execute, but you can begin using the shell for other tasks. Windows PowerShell provides commandlets for checking on the status of a background job. When a command runs in the background, its results are saved in memory as a part of a job object. You can retrieve the results of completed jobs and work with those results in the pipeline. Three commands are able to create background jobs. Get WMI object, invoke command, and start job. Note that other add-in commands may also support the creation of new jobs. And also note that jobs are an extension point in Windows PowerShell. That means that the native job functionality will behave as described here, but other developers can create new things, also called jobs, which may behave slightly differently. When you create a new job, it is given a sequential ID number and an arbitrary name. When using invoke command to start a new job, you can specify an alternate job name parameter that gives the job an easier to remember name. The name can be used in place of the ID number to refer to the job when you want to check its status or retrieve its results. Get WMI object does not have the ability to specify a job name, but you could assign one by running the command within an invoke command script block, as shown here. When you use invoke command and its as job parameter, you create a top-level job. You can check the status of this top-level job by running get job, and you can retrieve the results from all computers, once the job is completed, of course, by using receive job. However, it is also possible to see the names of the child jobs that have been created. Run get job to get that top-level job, and then select just its child jobs property to see the child job names or ID numbers. Once you know the names of the child jobs, you can retrieve them individually using getJob and its name parameter. Here's a quick syntax example. You can see that the asJob parameter is specified, forcing this command to run as a background job. The command to run is getService, specified as the script block parameter. The computer name parameter specifies two computers to run the command against. And you can even see that an alternate name was specified for the resulting job. The output is the job that was created, with an ID of 1 and a name of service check. Let's see that example for real. We'll use invoke command, specify a script block with the command or commands to execute, and specify one or more remote computer names. We have to specify a job, and we can choose to specify an alternate job name, or just accept the default made up job name. The result is a job object that represents the background process we just started. Although we've used localhost with invoke command in a couple of examples, in practice, it's something you should avoid doing. Invoke command always has to go out to the network, so for localhost, you are essentially looping back into the local computer. To start a local background job, use the start job commandlet. It works similarly to invoke command. Specify a script block to execute. Of course, you don't need to specify a computer name since it will only start local jobs. Once a job is running, you can monitor its progress, remove the complete job, or retrieve the results from a completed job. The shell provides several job management commandlets. Get job will retrieve all available jobs. Specify the ID or name parameter to retrieve a specific job. Pipe this command's output to get member or to format list to see the properties of a job. Remove job will remove a job. Specify either the ID or name parameter to specify which job, or pipe jobs into this commandlet to remove them. Wait job will pause and wait for a job to complete. Specify either the ID or name parameter to specify which job, or pipe a job into this commandlet to wait for that job. This commandlet can be useful in scripts, when you need the script execution to pause until a given background job has completed. Stop job will halt the execution of a job, including jobs that have hung and will not complete on their own. Specify either the ID or name parameter to specify which job, or pipe a job into this commandlet to stop that job. That job we started earlier has probably had plenty of time to complete. 
but let's check by running get job to retrieve all of the current jobs. There is the status of complete, meaning the job is ready for us to retrieve its results. When a job completes, the output of its commands are cached in memory as part of the job object. You use the receive job commandlet to obtain those results from the memory cache. Receive job places objects into the pipeline. You need to specify either the job ID or job name to retrieve. When you receive the output of a job, the shell removes the output from the job's memory cache. That means you can only use receive job one time against any given job. After doing so, there will be no other results to receive. By specifying the keep parameter, however, you can instruct the shell to give you the job results and to retain them in the job's cache. Another way to retain the job's results is to export them to an XML file, or another file format, or to save the results in a variable. Here you can see that we are retrieving job results based on the job name and instructing the computer to retain the job's results in memory. Notice the PS computer name property? That property was added by the remoting system and tells us which computer each object originally came from. Let's use receive job to receive the results of the job we ran earlier. We won't specify keep this time, but we will save the job output into a variable. We can then display the contents of that variable and continue to refer to those objects through that variable. If we look at the job list again by using get job, we can see that the job is still there, but we know it doesn't have any more output for us. We can pipe the job to remove job to remove it from the system. Here is an example of how to get child jobs from a multi-computer job. We retrieve the top-level job and examine its child jobs property to see the job names of the child jobs. There will be one child job per computer. We can then use get job along with the child job's name to see that job or use receive job to get the results for just that child job. Once a job is running, you can monitor its progress, remove the complete job, or retrieve the results from a completed job. The shell provides several job management commandlets. Remove job will remove a job. Specify either the ID name or parameter to specify which job, or pipe jobs into this commandlet to remove them. Wait job will pause and wait for a job to complete. Specify either the ID or name parameter to specify which job, or pipe a job into this commandlet to wait for that job. This commandlet can be useful in scripts when you need the script execution to pause until a given background job has completed. Stop job will halt the execution of a job, including jobs that have hung and will not complete on their own. Specify either the ID or name parameter to specify which job, or pipe a job into this commandlet to stop that job. Background jobs provide a great way to run long-running tasks in the background while you continue to use the shell for other tasks. Invoke command is used to start background jobs on remote computers and utilizes Windows PowerShell's remoting features. Start job is used to start jobs on the local computer. Various job commandlets are available to retrieve a job list, receive job results, wait for jobs, remove jobs, or stop jobs that are stuck or will not complete. 